This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 671. Tuesday, we have been talking about professional wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And we're ready to talk pro wrestling with you and many of our friends here in the studio. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Hold on. There we go. First of all, in deep, dark, uh, upstate New York is our friend with the future Endeavor letter from the WWE. It is Mad Mike. Sorg. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to look behind me. Is Huskis the pig boy behind me waving? Huskis the pig boy. Let me check. Hold on. Let me remove that graphic. No, I think you're okay. I think okay. you're okay. I, I just I wanted to double check because he's he's one of the only ones we haven't seen yet. So okay, okay. And I figure if anyone's gonna be behind me, it's going to be the chocolate eating pig. Uh, okay. All right. Well, just because the other one would scare me, mm-hmm. the, okay. the the the, the uh, satanic boss that we don't know who that is. Also, also with us, and apparently has had a lot of explaining to his children about the Firefly Funhouse is Mainstream Matt. Hello, Sorg. How are you? <laughs> you sound distressed. Oh, I, I'm, I am distressed. You are distressed. <laughs> I'm in a lot of distress, is your, is mostly your... because of the pre-show conversation. No, going on is that too? Got my brain working. <laughs> Found things it does not need to be working on, but here no, we are. no, we shouldn't be talking about politics on a live stream. No, 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 we don't need to be talking about the you know the 25th Democratic presidential candidate on our free time that, that we completely to talk happening. to on a podcast here on this yeah. network. 26, uh, nice guy, just 26. Are you wait, 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 is that is it? Oh, the couch with right us now. to the 26th presidential candidate joining us two six. in studio, <laughs> Mr. Two Six himself, Ronnie Starks. Hello, everyone, I'm running for president, apparently. <laughs> He is he is on a platform of of uh, uh, safety and social justice uh, for the Democratic president. Are you even a dem? I'm not going to ask that. It's a personal question. <laughs> uh, Ronnie Starks, how you doing? Back again. Hey, hey, I missed you guys. Yes, you did. <laughs> uh, it's easy to get on the show. Hey, I'd love to come back. Hey, I don't have any book this week. Come on over. It's just like I was joking on Twitter. You're like, I don't have anybody on this week. I'm like, oh, I guess I'm booking myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's usually I get a panic about Sunday night and start asking people if I forgot to book somebody this week. And then, you know. Sork has literally never booked me. I just show up. That is true. I just feel like if you don't book somebody, I'm just going to show up. You know, in the here. early days of the show. The only person that doesn't apply for is someone named T. Croce. I think that's how you pronounce T. it. T. Croce. He has ducks, T- I understand. Crossy. Yeah. He was asked to be on. Yeah, and we say no. Oh, he was in exchange. Ronnie, you and were... he just, he just ignored the conversation. He's ignored the conversation. He's like, this is too much for me. I should have told him, like, dude, just show up and we'll hang yeah. out. And he just said nothing. Like, I had somebody message uh, like an hour ago say, who's on tonight in the pro wrestling world? And I didn't respond because I was playing Ninja Turtles. I'm sorry about that, Nick. Uh, but, anyways, uh, but that's how it happens. Hey, well, you know, the first, like, three co-hosts we had of the wrestling mayhem show are just people that showed up with other people and then mad mike's still here mm-hmm. yep yeah. uh that's how it works around here so how many times have i been on so far uh six seven is it is that where we're at so am i a co-host now yeah you're pretty much a co-host now. <laughs> yes i'm a regular now high five <laughs> Very nice. also with us dan sandwich is with us i always come when ronnie comes uh i tag along that's what she whoa, said. Whoa. Oh, oh, Jeez, wait. violation! Viol- violate. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time I violate. Won't be the last time I violate. <laughs> oh, Dan Sandwich, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you, you guys. Uh, empty. So you have like a dual identity now, depending on what state you're in. Oh Jesus! Yeah, what? I guess you could say I swing both ways. Sorry, Huskis the pig boy popped up behind Daniel Bryan. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I don't know and what you're talking about. And Riz, Riz just posted a gif of it. It's terrifying. Oh, no. 
Oh okay, no. Okay. We'll, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about. Oh, there he is. There he is. I know. I know. Rambling Rabbit. I know. Uh, the witch. Uh, who else? Yeah, we, hold on. We we we, we got to get through introductions first before we can talk about the Sorry, intricacies. I, I, of I literally just saw it pop up, and it's the here. world bending Firefly Funhouse. Uh, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com. Subscribe to us on your favorite podcaster. Watch the video on YouTube and Facebook, uh, and of course, ask your um, um, device that's listening to you all the time uh, uh, on Google Home. And uh, 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 nope, 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 not a word. Um, Amazon Echo, that's the thing, to listen to uh, you uh, uh, to us on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm just disturbed about the Huskus pig. Uh, you can also email us at that email address. Good times! Good, time. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, 412-206-WMS0. And, of course, you can tune in every Tuesday night. Follow us on Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page around 9 p.m. Eastern. We'll be doing something streaming. Maybe we're playing Ninja Turtles. Maybe Matt Carlin's is going off about presidential candidates of all things, right? Um, I just want to know why. I just, <laughs> I just like once you're past candidate number like 15. All yeah, right, yeah. Why you want to be? I'm never. I'm how, getting how, in on. I'm getting in this. You know what? You there's room for a 17th oh, candidate. There's dare. room for a 26th candidate. Yeah, I am 26. You're 27. You're two six. That's right, Ron yeah. Starks. Coming in, <laughs> coming in hot, coming in hot. We're gonna have a debate on the show. <laughs> now, then I would have to be two seven. I do not want in. Yeah, we're all yeah. master debaters on this show. I'm just saying, there's still a chance. Yeah, so saying there's a chance. Um, also, what the hell? Uh, we just at Mayhem Show. That's the thing that happens too. Um, where usually I'm just talking about how everybody should interview Effie. Uh, also, uh, thank you to our Patreon supporters, patreoncom slash Show. Oh, and also thank you to our streaming partners, the 405 Media. <laughs> dot com check your local listings for when we're streaming over there or follow our twitter because they also let you know there too thank you to our patron supporters patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show our friends bo diggity Woo! ed burke bobby fj town tina keys uh team hammerfist and the matthew and jennifer carlin's foundation for podcast betterment and our friends at the pocky club five dollar level uh let's see didn't i do a shoot interview with you ronnie last time yeah <laughs> <laughs> we will have some equivalent for gold or after dark. Uh, uh, well, the before dark was probably the pretty interesting to begin with. Uh, we'll have something when uh, when the lights go out here. No, that doesn't sound right. Anyways, Pocky Club five dollar level. Bradley, uh, Doc Remedy, Dave Potter of the Tiny Shutter Podcast, Cal Turner, and Daniel Towery. And at the PC Club ten dollar level, our friend Ryan Clark at thirteen dollars, oddly. And our manager at the twenty dollar level, our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling. So thank you so much. You guys can support the, support the show too at Patreon.com. Slash wrestling mayhem show. <laughs> Tina's saying she's just start popping up on Google Hangouts. You know, there was a point where we had like a, you could you could do a Google Hangout and have an open invite, and literally just random people would pop in. But some people would just like pop in and stare at us, <laughs> and like not like oh they're just watching and just being you know a wallflower. It was just like it was kind of creepy. That's mm. something I would do. <laughs> it was yeah. You know, Ronnie was probably one of them. Um, so there's that. Okay. Let's get back to the creepy. There's a lot happening with Firefly Funhouse for their night. Um, yes. There, there's also uh, uh, breaking news. Uh, Alistair Black cut one of his weird promos. Uh huh. And someone knocked at his door. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm thinking all you have to do is let him in. Mm. Oh, jeez. So, Alistair. So, so, really, I'm pretty sure that the Firefly Funhouse. The door that's in the Firefly Funhouse is has, the, just, has just been the closet. Is to is Alistair Black has been cutting promos. That Alistair Black has just been yelling to himself over the last month about how nobody will fight him. Um, <laughs> that's interesting. That's an yeah. interesting theory. Um, so the Firefly Funhouse has gotten um, even more weird. No Firefly Funhouse, but the characters have been popping up in the background of backstage segments on uh, Raw and now SmackDown. We've confirmed. Um, oh, Matt, you know what it is? They've hmm. been looking for where Alistair does his promos. There you go. There you I go. don't know why they were checking Raw. Maybe they were looking to see where Mojo's mirror was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Matt, you've had to deal with oh, this. Yeah. You want to tell In us re- that? Wrestling yeah. parent um, um, <laughs> story of the week. Your, your kid's very avid wrestling. or Well, your one kid. Yeah. Very avid wrestling fan. Um, I am surprised you let him see the Firefly Funhouse. It wasn't my idea. You know, it wasn't your idea? No. I was, was, was he being punished? <laughs> no, he wasn't being punished. 
<laughs> just the sucker's on all the time. So okay. It's hard right. to avoid. Yeah. Um, anyway, he um he, he's uh my this is my nine year old son, and uh he's up uh up in Erie visiting his grandparents this week. But he um as we were watching Raw last night, um and during the uh first like backstage, you know, walkie bit where uh, the Miz is walking and you see, you know, the puppet for Abby the Witch peek out from behind the corner and uh you know, startling a little bit, but like immediately my phone rings. <laughs> and it's <laughs> and it's my son. And he's like, Dad, Dad, did you see that? Did you see that behind the Miz? I'm like, yeah, I saw it. I saw it. I was I, I knew exactly what he was talking about the minute he called. And I was like, yeah, I saw it. I saw it. Who, who was that? What was he doing back there? I don't know what's going on. I don't know. So I, he we're, has. We're, we're, we're trying to predict the whims of an 80 year old man, son. I do not know what's going to happen next. <laughs> so. so. So has he seen the segments? Yeah, he's seen the segments. And how has that gone? Reaction. Has there been explaining to do? Yeah, there's a lot of explaining okay, to do. Okay. Okay. Like, it, 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 so I was going to get, uh, it, say that uh, tonight. I would. I didn't get to talk to him. His mom got to talk to him tonight mm-hmm. while he was watching SmackDown, and it's just it's this nonstop conversation. I don't know why Huskus is there. I don't know what's going on, son. No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And you're just going. He just has nonstop questions. Just about this. like Twitter. Nothing but just endless stream of concern about. Uh, these these characters from the Firefly Funhouse entering our world. He does not want to let them in, Sorg. Oh, no. Are we at the point? We were at, well, we had uh, Gory on a few episodes ago. Where we were talking about like shit that creeped us out growing up, right? Yeah. Like, is this is this the like the thing your kid is going to have? Like, yeah, I remember when like Bray Wyatt and that damn puppet scared the crap out of me. Well, just think about like what what scares you as a kid uh-huh. isn't that something is scary; it's that you can't stop thinking about it. Uh huh. So yeah, so this is the same problem with the Firefly Funhouse. At least as it relates to my nine year old, he can't <laughs> stop thinking about it. Yeah, he, he does nothing but it is consuming his thoughts. Um, at least right now it is. Hopefully he'll move on to something else. But right now he's thinking about it a lot, a lot. So hopefully, sweet dreams. He's not worried about the Seth Rollins or Becky Lynch relationship. He's worried about. No, that's what my wife's worried oh, about. Oh, well, yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's the evolution, a little bit. Yeah. So um, don't get me started on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope she's watching so she can jump in the chat room and tell everybody like, oh, she good. She is watching. Are you ready? Jen can explain to everybody how much she. She, she 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 was like squealing in delight at the end of uh, the pay per view on Sunday night because Seth and Becky were in the ring making googly eyes at each other. I'm like, <laughs> what's your problem? <laughs> Look how cute they are! Look at the faces she smacked him on the ass. Oh, get down here on me. I was like, oh, come on. Are we ready for Total Rollins? Totally Total Rollins. <laughs> total Rollins. <laughs> Rollins. Are you guys wait, ready wait, wait, for Total Rollins? Total Rollins. Total Rollins. No? Star Bust now. Wait, wait, wait. Was it was it Raw Lynch? Was that what we came up with last night, Mike? Uh, Raw Lynch, Seth Key. There's a lot. Yeah, yeah. We were workshopping it a little bit because whatever yeah. they were used, doing on Raw was not. Yeah, Raw Lynch is we, lazy. Raw Lynch is much better. Rawlins, but you want to uh, you want to really bake your noodle. Try and come up with one for Lacey and Baron. Oh, <laughs> Lacey. Yeah, it uh, doesn't work. No, none of it works. What did Trust you me, say? I was thinking of a lot of different variations. Today. Mike, or, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Main Street Matt, tell tell me your your first uh, uh, inkling of Lacey Evans and and Baron Corbin together. I'm glad you asked. Uh, you, I'm glad a... you asked. As long as it ends with Baron Corbin dressed as Colonel Robert Parker, I'm okay. Wait, with I it. didn't see that part. <laughs> as long as that's Wait, where it ends. On. That's what I want. I thought it was the part. So you want him to go from Ruby Tuesday to KFC? <laughs> yes, I do. I thought you were talking. I thought you were the one that tweeted about um um how it looks like they're about no, to no, flip that's Bobby a, F. That's about... Bobby F. J. Towns joke. Yeah, I only stole it. Oh, I'm sorry. But yes, they look like they look like they're they look like a couple that's flipping homes and about to get their own show on HGTV. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's the next. Uh... That, or they look like they just lost bidding for one of those um. Storage lockers. <laughs> they could have had a lot of stuff. Right. Oh, right. Because it's wars. like the. Yeah. Yeah. So it's. Yeah. It's the. It's the attractive southern blonde and the guy who has no business anywhere near her. That That is the combination <laughs> for every HDTV show. So either that. Perfect. Either that. Or 
It's the closing staff of a Ruby Tuesday that's been open way too long and is weeks away from shutting down. Mm. Like Are the there manager, any Ruby like, like, left? There's no yeah, like, yeah, yeah, there yeah. is. There's one okay. in my mall. Yeah, there's one. In there's Gross one City. in my mall. Like, like Barron's the manager is still trying to be professional and is trying to land a gig within the company, and Lacey is the one who won't even wear her uniform anymore and just doesn't give a fuck. I won't wear any flair. No nope. flair. No flair. No, so definitely cute. no flair. We got rid of that on SmackDown. I got your flair right here. Here's all, here's all your flair. Yeah. Oh, I keep forgetting Jennifer Anson was in that. It's a great movie. Yeah. That was her first movie. That was her first. Oh no, movie? Leprechaun was her first. Movie. Leprechaun was her first movie. Yeah. Oh, good job. What a weird. Job. That like her first was was that Courtney Cox was the He Man movie. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. So strange. Um, Are you talking about the Arnold Schwarzenegger He Man movie. The uh, Dolph Lundgren. Oh, close. I forget Dolph Lundgren's a thing every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Creed 2, pretty amazing, by the way. Well, yeah. Oh, that was really Still good. need to see that. That was really good. I didn't even see the first one. In there. That was still worth it. Anyways, that's enough about that. Um, if he dies, he dies. If he, if, it was pretty good. It was really good. Because it's like, what happens after you lose in Russia, right? Like, um, you you uh, get elected president. <laughs> oh. You why are we keep we, we gotta keep stop hashtag PMS? To, you brought up Russia. That's I your did fault. bring up Russia. Politics That's my right. fault. If it doesn't, if it doesn't end in a Nikolai Volkov joke, we've just went the wrong way. Um, can you ask the couch what they think of <laughs> Becky and Seth making googly eyes at each I, other on wait, TV? Am I, the only I really want to know what you, Dan and Ron are you think telling about me? this. I like I, my, my impression was they 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 couldn't care less, but uh, <laughs> that's what I want them to say. Okay, <laughs> I don't are, care. I don't <laughs> care. It's one of those things where like, all right, is a relationship real? Is it a work? Hey, who fucking cares? Good for them. If it's a work, what are they making off of it? Nothing. Mm-hmm. They're just fucking with the fans. <laughs> that's not a work. That's a rib. Well, it's it, yeah, it's 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 whatever is gonna make the fans like you guys would be a cute couple. We can sell this. You'll and then get it. And then they'll have a big break. Just don't in propose in the ring, and we make Mattel action figures of that, and then you guys break up, and we can't sell them. That'd be unfortunate. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, probably, for, that's for the record, happened before. I, I believe the relationship is legit. I mean, okay, okay. Like, Seth has gone on legitimate, you She's know, outlets and said, okay. yeah, we were we're dating. So. Okay. So, John so I don't think it's a work. So. so did John do good point? Huh? Point taken. Okay. Hold on. Good Producer, Missy, Producer Missy has something to say. Yo. My question is, how is this any different than John Cena and Nikki Bella? Oh, um, Becky's a good wrestler. Well, John, Cena, oh. John Cena and Nikki Bella actually made money off their relationship on Total Bellas. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. did. Yeah, they did. And people, so like, people Rollins like both and of them. Own Rollins and Lich ain't making any money. Are you That's ready? why it's not a work. Are you ready? Are you ready for for? I don't know something in the last. I'm trying to figure out a show name for them. What would there? Because we got Ms. and Mrs. We got Total Divas, Total Bellas. You, I mean, you went down a dark Cross path the minute you like said the, in the last. What some, are you talking about? Something in the last. Right? No, don't no, say in no. the last. That's the man, bad. Don't say that. The man and the man. Fire in the last. <laughs> or I think it was just the, the the man's man or something, right? Or the, the man no, wears the pants. That's what I would y'all to call the show. That's right. It that's would right. be <laughs> called My Two Men. <laughs> oh, oh, My Two Men. That can get awkward. Okay. All right. What? It's the man's man and the man. The man's man and the man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, He's a man. Oh, there's your theme she's song the right there. She's the man's man. There's your theme song He's right no, there. No, she, she's the man. He's the man's man. There we go. If she uh, pair we, him up, we just ha- repurpose that song. Pair, pair him up with Hornswoggle. You got two, two and a half men. <laughs> oh, wow. A man in his last. Or he just get done. <laughs> don't have to resign Hornswoggle. Just use Drake Maverick. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Might as well. Speaking of Drake Maverick. Oh, I love it. There were there were several weddings this weekend. First of all, let's give a shout out to our friends Lady Frost and uh the Savage Gentleman. I screwed it up on the group. Sorry. I get it. when you get a message from the Savage Gentleman, it's like you forgot my name. It's like sorry. Uh, it's been a long weekend and I don't know what time zone I'm in. Um so not only did they have a great wedding, which was officiated by one Mick Foley, by the way. Um, and I got the miss because I had to go to Nebraska. Uh, so, so Mick Foley does their wedding, and I'm officiating your wedding. <laughs> you are the Mick Foley you're in like, his you're life, the boot, man. You're the bootleg Mick Foley. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was nice seeing you guys. All right, there we are. Don't I, forget to bring your socks. 
I don't have socks on. <laughs> that is uncomfortable. Oh. <laughs> so there was that. Um, I believe uh, Killian Dane and Nikki Cross also got married this weekend. Um, and that might have happened for a, a while back. I feel like it was. I thought weekend. I did too. I I don't know. I saw pictures. I don't this know weekend. why. Only I don't to know why me. the pictures only came out over the weekend. Maybe they just got them from a from a photographer. Maybe, maybe. that's true. That's true. I mean, my friend, like, but my friend, when my friend got married, he, he, it took him like six months to get the pictures. So that, that was, might be that what was not this was. great. <laughs> that was not great. Um. Uh. But also, uh, Drake Maverick got got married. Um. And at the wedding, apparently, lost his twenty four seven championship. It's a shame. Uh, it's, it is. It is a shame. Um, and he didn't lose it to King Maxwell. He did not. He, that's the this. This was the thing that Mike had the biggest issue last night. That King Maxwell is not at least a one time twenty four seven champion out of this whole mm-hmm. situation. It'll happen. But in the meantime, I, I think between well, our truth will make good out of anything right now, right? But Drake has got to be the one making the most out of this. And I mean, he was, you know, doing doing posts on Twitter where he was going up to drive throughs and asking people if they've seen R-Truth, mm. you know. And the first thing he does when he wins the belt, the, the video of him winning the belt, heading off, still dressed as Carmella, and then going to the drive through of In-N-Out Burger <laughs> and, and letting people know he's in the airport, still dressed as Carmella with his midriff showing um, mm-hmm. on the airplane. Uh, and and still just take, you know letting people know that he's the twenty four seven champion. Oh God, Tina Tina asked a very important question in the chat room. Do I have a running list of wrestlers to officiate my wedding? Oh wow, that's that's intense. I don't know. I'd I'd have to think about that. We got we got we can probably work something out. I'd have to think about this. Also, who would you have? I, oh God, I mean, isn't like, it obvious? Like, like pie in the sky, yeah. Pie in the sky. Who would I have? Yeah. Ooh, Ted DiBiase. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's pie a in the good sky. one. Uh, junior or senior? Sky. Junior or senior? Uh, yes. I, I, if, there you go. No, no, no. DB uh, DiBiase senior would be the officiant. Mm-hmm. DiBiase junior would run the DiBiase part. Posse party. I bet I can get Virgil in the parking lot. You oh yeah, you, you can get, get Virgil, Virgil for we got two weeks. Can, to get no, get no, I want Virgil nowhere near. No, no, this is this is for their that's for Dan's wedding. Yeah, I can get Virgil. Yeah. Oh, okay. Virgil can hold my notebook for me as I read the uh, thing down. Pay him twenty bucks to show up. He'll do it. You're paying him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> if you need a contract over the situation, to go go talk to producer Missy. Um, Missy, can you draw that up for me? Yeah. You just draw just, up the contract. Just take the contract from the Legend of Virgil and uh, just put just cross out video and say wedding, <laughs> and you'll be okay. And cross out fuck money with marriage money. By the way, did we put the phrase fuck money in the contract? <laughs> True or false? You know what? Don't tell me and let me just think that we did. If it says fuck money, just leave it in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> but the only way the wedding ends is if I get put in the million dollar dream, and that's how the wedding ends. Deal. All right. I like it. Carrie is going to kill us all. I like it. Hi, and then, Carrie. And then she wa- yeah, she's probably watching. She's and probably then while you're she's passed out, motherfucking us right now. While you're passed out, mm-hmm. the uh, the garter gets stuffed in your mouth. That will be the second time I got choked out by uh, Virgil in my uh, last oh, really? year's career. Yeah. <laughs> yeah good. Uh, did I ever tell you that story? No. What? I, I did the show out in Ohio, and uh, they didn't think, Vir- or they thought Virgil was going to skip out on the show mm-hmm. if they paid him first. Mm-hmm. So they made me hold on to Virgil's payday the entire show. And then I did a spot with Virgil that I literally was like poking him and telling him to do all this shit. And then uh, the ending spot was he got sick and tired of my shit, put me in the million dollar dream, ripped the money out of my hand, grabbed his bag they left by the door, and walked out the door. So you literally paid Virgil. I literally paid Virgil to work on the show. <laughs> to work the show. Yeah. You were the money man for Virgil. I was. I gave him his fuck money to be on the show. <laughs> you you financed his trip to Olive Garden. <laughs> There's a picture of me getting choked out somewhere. I'll just find it. Jeez. I, oof. Uh, on that note, um, we got plenty. What are we of the, talking about? I, the 24-7 championship? Oh, yeah. I love it. You know what? Drake. Kudos to Drake for making something out of it. Mm-hmm. 
our truth is just proof that you know they got to use these they got to use these veterans that they have on their roster these guys with experience the guys you know, with you put, character the, yeah, the guys with character the guys who fans are familiar with it worked with it worked to a greater extent with Kofi but i mean the same principles in place with our truth you know, these guys know how to get over. They know how to work. You just put them out there. They can make anything work. Mm -hmm. he's take, work. They'll take all these guys who, who've done it a million times and keep putting them on TV until these younger kids can get it figured out. Mm -hmm. Have they or are they showing any indication of doing a match with the 24-7 title? Or is this just like they've segments after segments after segments of schoolboys? It, it, it has been, but they, they, did, they did do a thing where... Um, Truth was in there, and they did have him have a straight match with Drake. It was very short, and then degenerated into about six title changes. Three were our truth. Um, yeah. so he's now a nine-time champion, by the way. Did Drake uh, get the belt back for at least one more time? Do I don't, don't think he no, did. It was, it was Drake. Uh, no, it was Heath Slater won it, mm -hmm. then lost it, then Cedric Alexander won it, then EC3 won it, then our truth won it. Mm -hmm. They're wasting EC3. No. They're wasting everyone in that segment. Yeah. But again, They're literally wasting everyone in that all segment. All those people now have something to do and get some TV time. Do you know who I'd rather see in the 24 7 picture? Hmm. Baron Corbin, Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre. Oh, you mean the guys doing tug of war? Anyone I'm sick of should just be in the 24 7 so we can just reverse all of their roles. Like Shane McMahon should be palling around with EC3. Mm hmm. Tell me mm -hmm. that's not you know, a match. He would be a good fit. He um, would be. Oh, yeah. Because Drew doesn't fit Shane McMahon's whole character. He doesn't. Not even close. I, yeah, I think it's more it's a point that he's a he's a big, bad, you know, bodyguard. He says Diesel. But he's not. He loses everything. Mm -hmm. He needed help from Shane to beat Roman. Twice and it couldn't. He couldn't even beat him. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. We'll we'll see what happens with that stuff. Um, <laughs> well, we, we know what's gonna happen with that. It's the Undertaker player. It's the Undertaker. Yes. Oh God, there's that too. Undertaker with the random. Yeah. Uh, random. You, you know, what? I, I know it was random and it was BS, but man, I was like, can we call the ratings? This freaking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so out of nowhere. Hmm. Didn't see it coming. It was that. It was fun. It was fun for what it was. Mm -hmm. It was good for the moment. I don't, don't ask me to get hyped for that tag match in Extreme yeah. Rules, but yeah. for that 30, 45 seconds, I was like, and nothing right. was explained. There was no, no reason nope. for him to come out. There was nope. no. He didn't even bother to like help Roman up. No. He's just like oh, Roman's like in the corner, like down, and Undertaker's like they're gone. I'm posing. Maybe, Turn on my maybe lights. He's just you know? Maybe he's just angry because Vince makes him keep working, so he's like to let me take out Shane. <laughs> I'll come back and you'll be beat up Shane again. <laughs> Throw him off of something. Yeah. Um jeez. Well, guys, if you want uh wrestling where there's uh you know people people getting some opportunities, we got a lot going on over here at indie wrestling .us and the indie wrestling uh .us network. Uh, indie wrestling dot network hey these guys are around on there you guys featured the the just recently the uh black diamond wrestling uh 16th anniversary where there was a little change with what was going on with you guys out there you've been mto show but you just get made a, a a little bit of an alteration right yeah we are now mt offended yes <laughs> we, are, we are offended by everything you're goddamn right we are. <laughs> <laughs> you are out with your picket signs. Uh, Dan, we learned that you're going to All, uh, All Elite Wrestling. I am going to AEW. Yep. We don't know if AEW knows he's coming to AEW. No. But, uh... They're going to find out today. <laughs> <laughs> Social media found out, didn't they? So uh, go check out what's going on there. Uh, there. There's a lot of fun stuff. And, and of course, the last uh, year of Black Diamond Wrestling is on Indie Wrestling Network exclusively. Uh, our, for entire shows if you want to go check those out and of course our friends prospect pro wrestling they have a show this weekend actually there's two shows this weekend both of them are exclusively uh full shows on indie wrestling network our friends at prospect pro wrestling this saturday and our friends at uprise um this uh friday uh so please go check those out if you're in the pittsburgh area or stay tuned in the network for those of the pop up there very very soon of course fight society you guys are still keeping everybody safe over there with MT OSHA mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, uh, Angel Gate on NDWrestling.us 
and the PWN Network. A lot of indie wrestling from Pittsburgh, from Erie, from Cleveland. A new premier wrestling show will be popping up. I took a little peek at it, and man, Atticus gets messed up in that thing. I think he has a match with Ron Mathis, oh. uh, and it gets pretty brutal. So go check that out. A lot going on over there. Um, but if you're if you don't like what's happening on Monday nights, check out the network. Even check out our Twitch feed. There's a lot of samplers of all the promotions uh, going on over there as well at Indie Wrestling dot network. Um, wrestling. Wrestling. That's what we're here for. We all watch too much of it. And we have a lot of opportunity for that. Um, and also stay tuned. New IP reviews, uh, Facebook Lives uh, going to be coming soon. You never know what shows we're going to be Facebook Living here in the coming month. But there, there will be some. There will be some surprises. I can't wait. You can't wait. I can't wait to talk about here. Um, so let's touch a little bit more on you guys. Um, so what, what t- explain to everybody what's going on in West Virginia. We, we did a little bit off of the show, uh, setting everybody up here, but, uh, you get, you guys at the 16th anniversary, uh, started doing something a little different well, on the one year anniversary. You know, let's get it straight. I'm it's sorry. Not, the one not, year anniversary, it's not black diamonds anniversary, right. it's the one year OSHA anniversary. Yes. Uh, we decided to take it a step further mm-hmm. and instead of, uh, handing out violations, uh, we've gotten offended to the point that we changed our name from MT OSHA to MT Offended. We are the Social Justice Wrestlers. You didn't have a match. You didn't. You weren't on the poster. I know, right? It's yeah, just an injustice. It's an injustice. Yeah, you had, you had a picket sign that said "Not, not my face." Not, where's my face? Where's my face? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get the chance started. And I thought it would work. You, you where, know where where's we my were face? on the card. You know, there were just little tiny little texts that said "MT OSHA." On the Sorg, bottom of the triangle. Sorg, let me let me ask you something. When Rock hosted WrestleMania, was he on the cover? When he was the host? The, the poster. Yeah, he was all over it when he was the host. When Hulk Hogan was uh, the host of WrestleMania, wasn't he on the cover? I believe he was. When the New Day was the host of WrestleMania, were they not on the cover? Sure. Where's Where's we my face? I'm not sure he if Alexa Bliss was, though. Where's my face? She was. Well, she was. Thank you for verifying. Yes. Yeah. You're right. You're right. I mean, it is kind of your WrestleMania at BDW, mm-hmm. right? It's, a, it's or an injustice. Your, Completely disrespectful. Your WrestleMania as Empty Osha, Empty Offended. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so, so, so it'll be interesting to see what you guys. What, so, what's in the store for for uh, uh, our friends in West Virginia? A lot of things. <laughs> Just have to wait to see. <laughs> we go off the cusp. A lot of times, we don't know what we're doing from month to month. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The best part about what we do is we just wing it, mm-hmm. and it works. Yeah. Less cone work. Is this is this a reaction of you getting bonked with a cone last month? We don't talk about that. So we no. don't talk about that? That never happened. It seemed like there were more and more incidents between that. Some trophies got busted. Um, we did break that trophy. That, was, that was that little girl. No, that Destin little, Vane broke the trophy. Destin broke the trophy. Yeah. They were both pulling out. It just fell apart. You know, oh. it's, it's their fault. You got to be careful mm-hmm. with your trophies. I didn't, I didn't break the trophy of the show before that. I don't know what he's talking about. That's the story. We're sticking yeah. to it. Yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll stay tuned for there if you guys want to join them. Uh, first Sundays of every month out there in Benwood, West Virginia, just south of Wheeling, as well as over on Indie Wrestling Network. And uh, we, have, we have definitely a bunch of clips up there uh, over on the YouTube as well. Um, so. We have a question in the chat room. Can somebody please explain to me what MT stands for? Made to. <laughs> <laughs> Made. Any more questions? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anybody have any legitimate questions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Made, made to OSHA. Made to offended. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The hell do you think it stood for? When we go to Ocean City, it's MTOC. Man, man titties offended? Like, what, did, what did you think it was? Uh, someone goes through a table, it's MTOMG. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, we just put, you know, we put our own little spin on everything. You know, don't ruin a good time. Person in the chat room, ask you a dumb question. Yeah. <laughs> Next, is the earth flat or is it round? I don't know. I don't know. Do you know? I heard it's flat. No. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm offended that you don't believe it's flat. A little offensive. No, no, I I know it's not flat. There's there's a difference. <laughs> what you tell me? I can't just walk off the edge of the earth if I just walk on the earth. That, you know, Correct. To be to be, <laughs> I mean, 
uh, Mike is. I, I'm a scientist. He is a scientist, technically. <laughs> Back off, man! I'm a scientist. <laughs> you you be up surprised for that. how many <laughs> times I say that. Dang. Oh man, that was a perfect opportunity for that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for being the Ghostbuster reference. <laughs> it really made my day. We're ready to believe you. Oh, not- <laughs> is the world flat around? We're ready to believe you. <laughs> <laughs> not on that one. Not Alex on is saying uh, he thought it was Mountain Osha. Mountain Osha. Who said that? Uh, I mean, be... we we should probably claim a mountain in, in in the name of Mount Osha. <laughs> we should. <laughs> like Mount, we could take Mount Olympus and easily change that to Mount Osha. We need to find a mountain in this town and just stand on it and be like, "Alas, we have found our mountain of Osha." You know, like, we can be like Christopher Columbus and find new land. Yeah, we sail the ocean blue. You know, discover America in 1842. Is that what it is? I don't know. Sounds good. 1642. Back off, man. (laughs) Back off, off, man. I'm a scientist. (laughs) Back off, man. I'm a historian. (laughs) Obviously, I failed. Hey, don't we have one on staff here? Well, well, yeah, we do. We do have one on on in in the rolodex. So (laughs) on the roster. On the roster. Okay. Man, I dropped out of college. Right. Leave me alone. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, a lot of fun stuff going on with you guys. Hey, I got. I got. uh, uh, Speaking of, because we didn't talk about enough Seth Rollins. Oh, there's so much to talk about there's, with little Seth. Oh boy, Seth is making sure that you guys know what's going on. Um, there was there was a series of tweets, <laughs> um, and unfortunately, I don't have the. Is this in the? I have a feeling Matt and I are gonna fight. <laughs> Matt, Matt, can you recount what happened with Seth Rollins and uh, one uh, Will in Ospreay the quickest way possible? In the quickest way possible. Seth Rollins is a company man. <laughs> <laughs> he took the Twitter, uh huh, and he spouted the most ridiculous statement in, on Twitter in a long it was time. Something in a long declared time. WWE me. is the best pro wrestling on the planet. Period. period. Didn't he say something about let me check my bank statement or something? No, no, no. Like oh, was, yeah, he got was, into that well, later. Well, that, that that's, a separate, that's a separate that came, back Will, and forth. Will Ospreay replied with, I'm alive. Well, that's the... Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the, Seth did something like... Came back later and like mm. said he was going to double down and someone got into the... Best, uh, tell me, find me another anyone else alive who can do what I can do. do. What I do, and Will Osprey simply a, chimed in with, "I'm alive." <laughs> <laughs> and which, uh, which Seth said something responds, like, "You know, I do have this in front of me." He says, "Oh, I'm sorry, little guy. We already have a better version of you here." And he just won the first U.S. title. He won just won his first U.S. title tonight, referring to Ricochet. Uh, uh, keep working hard, though, buddy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Seth Rollins, company man. Wow. So uh, he's not wrong. Mm, sorry, sorry, I have a cough. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? This is split. Uh, let, let me just nip this whole thing in the bud here before Mad Mike and I start to fight over stupid crap. We're splitting. <laughs> we're splitting hairs, debating the the very elite of the elite in yes. pro wrestling. So this is a pointless mm-hmm. argument. So I'm not going to debate Seth versus Will or Seth versus Ricochet or Okada, yeah, Kenny you, Omega. You, that's all bull it's all, crap because they're all, all down to personal top tier elite guys in the business, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, they're they're all the best. The yeah, issue it's, it's, all, it's all down to personal. The, the issue it's worth good. debating. The issue that's the, the the thing that Seth said that's truly egregious is the WWE is the best pro wrestling on the planet. Period. That's where he's wrong. Um, no, I don't think he is. Ooh. Matt, Mike, I don't. You think he is. no 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 stop. Just, just let me just let me tee this up for you, Mike. You come on. Every single week, mm-hmm. disgusted at what you're watching on WWE yeah. television, and now yeah. you're going to step up here and you're going to defend them. I am disgusted with the storytelling. Now smash your cup. I I rarely talk crap about the in ring product. What in ring product? It's all promos. No, it no. Trust me, it's not. <laughs> I would know. There is a lot of wrestling. It's, there's a lot of wrestling within the worlds of WWE. In the especially seven. if you especially if you venture outside Monday nights. Mm-hmm. NXT TakeOver. NXT UK 205 lot. I'll put that shit up against any brand in the world. Well, NXT okay. is its own entity though. In my No, it's not. Opinion. It's WWE. It's WWE. You're with that. You're with that. Um, I will I will put those four shows up against any brand in the world, and you tell me it's better. I don't agree. Mm-hmm. 
Apparently, apparently it didn't. Uh, Tina's let us know it didn't just stop with o- Osprey. Uh, he had a few words about Moxley too. I did not. Oh uh, yeah, he that. went he on a uh, podcast um, with uh, one of the guys from Sports Illustrated, who somehow got him to come on his podcast like right after he tweeted this stuff on Monday mm-hmm. or Sunday or Monday or anyway. And um, yeah, got him to go on and on about Moxley. And uh, Seth is just way out to lunch. Is he just what? What is he ta- ta- saying He's about Moxley just though? Talking about Moxley he- like. You know, just just hold on. I don't God want to spin my wheels. There. I'm going to find top champion talk well about his own promotion. Mm-hmm. God heaven forbid. forfend. Heaven well, forfend. Did he talk shit on his friend? <laughs> yeah, 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 he yeah, kind of that, did talk shit on his friend. Yeah, now that you mention it, that is kind of what happened. That's pretty shitty. Yeah. What yeah. do you guys think about the theory that uh, AEW is partially owned by WWE? I think that is bull crap. <laughs> that, is, that is a that is actually a theory that I floated here on the show. Uh, I I laugh. First of I all, laugh. AEW I, won't be anything to me unless you know they start doing their shows on TNT. Absolutely. So if, if, if AEW was company. yeah, if AEW was partially owned by WWE, they'd have better music I, for the talent. I play. Explain, so explain why WWE keeps <laughs> mentioning them then. Do why, why 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 do they keep mentioning? Oh, them? I guess they have, haven't they? Little things yeah. here and there. So so I I I don't even watch WWE, and I hear about the little quips. That yeah, because I mean in. it makes news every time they do it, right? We're like, exactly. oh, they said it, right? Yeah, because they're not taking so, it so seriously. So the people yeah. that don't know they're about like AEW are, are hearing about it. Yeah, yeah. They're, other than them chanting it during the main event of a pay per view this weekend. Yeah, um, but they don't. So, no, but WWE has only mentioned them once. Right. Well, let's also keep in mind that. Uh, Paul Heyman was on Vince's payroll when Paul Heyman right. was still running ECW. Yeah. So I don't think I don't think Vince is following AEW and maybe has a hand in it. But Ooh. I think Paul does is Ooh. my theory. Maybe there is something happening, but it is not happening at that level. It is happening at because you know NXT and everything has partnerships with Evolve and these things are happening. Why wouldn't something happen on this end? Because it's like, hey, guys, we're doing great, but we could do better, and something needs to kick the ass. Hey, if we kind of help these guys out over here, there you go. Didn't Michael Hayes just go over there? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Like, Michael Hayes has been a company man for like 30 fucking years. Wait, I thought but, that was his joke. He, it was a joke? I don't know. Because I kept seeing people like, no, no, post like... Because Rick Diamond kept posting like ones with Linda McMahon and stuff, too. Uh, but I think the, the Michael Hayes one was a real graphic. Maybe. I don't know. Pe- I think there's actually a, an AEW generator. So actually, we can get the Dan Sandwich is, going, is all elite. <laughs> oh Let's do God. it. Uh, graphic in, in like a moment, probably, because I think that's just on Giphy by now. Well, I, I, I had heard a theory that uh, since AEW is a little, bit, a little bit more geared towards the adult fan, mm-hmm. that... Uh, and, and again, hear me out. Mm-hmm. That WWE wants to use them to gear up the, uh, you know, the casual fan or the fan who wants more of an adult-oriented show, uh, so that they can then convince USA to let them get a little bit more edgier in return to meet the rating. I, I don't think right. that's. I don't think that's really the case because. I mean, on top of that, Mike, like you said, uh, you think they only mention it once on TV, right? Yeah. Well, the wrestlers are constantly messaging, uh, saying it on Twitter. They're poking yeah. at each other. Yeah, yeah. 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 There, there is, there is there no, to- there is no corporate monitor mm-hmm. on any of these people's Twitter's account. There needs to be. Because if I went on Twitter and I started talking about my competitor, like how they are, mm-hmm. no We'd way, man. I'd be in trouble for that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and I'm not working for a billion. Well, I mean, I am, but. <laughs> I'm not working for like a televised company, you know. Yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you, we're, you're, we're working. I mean, we're talking regionally at this point, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. and then there's that. So would they on on that side, or is it just it's so high level that they just don't care? I mean, I used you to know? put my foot in my mouth a few times. Even if I'm even a if a, even Who if an indie it? wrestler did that, say say a PWX guy said something about IWC, like oh, I can't wait to get there or something. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. but but the way they probably look at it is. Our superstars are wrestling fans. They're oh. not. They're not. None. No one is out and out promoted. Right. A double. Like they, no one's out. No one has outwardly said, "Go watch Double or Nothing." Yeah. Go buy tickets to these shows. No one said that. But if you have got di- your just your your straight up WWE fan who has maybe no well, maybe young kids who don't have a lot of the internet access, right? Mm. And you keep saying this AEW, 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 then eight-year-old little Jimmy's saying, hey, Dad, what's AEW? 
Next thing you know, dad pops it on. Dad likes it because it's and, more of an adult oriented and thing. And dad is our truth because little Jimmy. Yeah. How is AEW more adult oriented? Uh, you don't think that that pay per view was more adult oriented? It was. And we'll no. see what and we'll see what the TV is. Just, we be, don't, just we, because we, Dustin bladed badly, <laughs> that's the only thing. Well, they were swearing a lot too. Yeah. Not really. I heard, I heard the f bomb once or twice. Okay. All right. Well, Ooh, and again, and that, again, the F bomb. Let's see what happens. When they get a television product and what that yeah, is, yeah, right? Because like, you really have to see right. what the actual that is show the is. true competition to a Raw or SmackDown, and that's where anybody's going to care. True right? competition, they yes. would have went, well, they would have went head to head Monday night with Raw, right? If oh they, no, they, that they would have failed. I, I, no way, no way. There I don't think so, any no, net, I don't think so any network would AEW. let them try it. Yeah, There's I don't so think if you went AEW that the fans would go there for that might be true. But think of it from TNT's perspective. If you're trying to launch a pro wrestling part product, all right, and we already saw what happened and you're when, not Ted when Turner. TNA and, and you're not Impact Ted Turner. tried to do it. He tried. Yeah. He succeeded. But the last time it was attempted, it failed spectacularly. If you're TNT, you're mm-hmm. probably thinking, you know what? Probably not the best idea to go straight at him. You yeah. know, yeah. we can find at our this, own niche here off to the side. I think point, from the network side, that's kind of where At this point, like, Monday night is a 25, nearing 30-year institution on Monday nights. It's yeah. like Monday. You don't. It's like you don't fuck with Monday Night Football, right? You don't. You don't tug on Superman's cape. Yeah. You don't spit in the wind, and you don't go head to head with Monday Night Raw. And how are you going to beat like, them? Mm-hmm. You don't. You uh, don't have to. You, you don't have to beat them because if you focus on beating them, you're going to lose. You have I to focus on with, ju- the, with the amount of hype that they got and the type of the fans that are out but, there today that hate WWE. And they they praise AEW like it's God's gift. These people, if you're forcing them to choose, you yourself, if you were forced to choose on Monday night to watch in AEW this day or and WWE, age, you don't which have one to would choose. you watch? In, in this day and age, you don't have to I'd choose. Say in this day and age, also this is the this is the age of the DVR. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So in this day and age, you do not have to AEW. choose. Mm-hmm. So most most WWE fans DVR Raw anyway. Then why not or go ahead watch and watch it on Hulu anyway? Then why not go head to head? It'll be, it'll be, it's a, it's a good. If question. you're going to DVR them anyway, and honestly, we don't know yet, right? Yeah. It hasn't been announced. Um, I believe Matt, you have a follow up on the Moxley situation we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, here's here's like a here's a quote from the interview. Because was breaking news. This is the real dirt we want. This is the real dirt we want. This is Seth talking to the <laughs> uh, podcast, uh, this SI Media podcast uh, earlier this week. This is a quote from Seth talking about Moxley. He says, quote, not everybody's equipped to handle the rigors of WWE and the schedule and how it affects you mentally and emotionally. And Ambrose gave everything he had to the company for the entire time he was here. He put his heart and soul into the travel and the schedule and the injuries and the work and the ring, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, he took his ball and went home or he went elsewhere, at least. And I think it's a little presumptuous of him to get on a podcast and talk down about the company that gave him such an opportunity. And he goes on to, and then he circles back. I love the guy. I love him. I'll always love him. Dean Ambrose did not take bank. his ball and go home. Dean Ambrose worked out the entirety of his contract. And when his contract was done, he left. Yeah, but then he, then, talk, then he talked trash about WWE, and, <laughs> and right then he was asked that, and then he well, answered. He yeah. and then and then right after that said he loves Seth and Roman like brothers. Mo- it's the same thing. Moxley Moxley took his ball that they gave him that was constantly deflated, and went to try to play somewhere else. Um, it, by the context of his interview, so, I'm not I'm not blaming Dean for leaving. He no, simultaneously no. put them over too. Yeah, he did. He, yeah. he he was 50 50 on that yeah. interview yeah and look what he's doing but, now oh. i mean but again you know kind of roll back to I, I always try to make the comparison is some people don't work in certain work environments right yeah exactly. like i probably can't work in the environment that that matt and, carlin's and, does for a multinational oh, company jesus i can right? barely work in it <laughs> yeah <laughs> look, yeah if, right if you seth know was, so if seth was booked like dean was mm-hmm. maybe seth would have left some people mm-hmm. can't flourish in an environment as is presented and how it functions like wwe does but somebody can flourish in an impact wrestling environment and build something cool or an ROH or whatever the AEW or just do the indies right and make a make a go at it there like it just whatever uh you know we, we you know a lot of com- comments in the chat room about you know art is art you know we can all like stuff it was like yeah but you know also people kind of like different are, are more attuned to different types of canvases right mm-hmm. in the long 
yeah, some people some people like printed art, some people like like auditory art, like music and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Like there's different forms of art you can enjoy. Yes, the subjective art form. Um I put a bow on one other thing. Mm. Uh, talking about, you know, the best pro wrestling on the planet. Go to like a website like Cage Match, you know, mm. go to uh, an God, app like cool. Grapple, you know, that Gets, that doesn't that isn't just one person's opinion that yeah, consolidates the opinions yeah. of many fans. Not just look at what look at hey, shut up. Look at what the best rated <laughs> matches are this year. Look at what the best rated shows are this year I, by fans, by lots of fans. Mm-hmm. And tell NXT me if WWE is over. Like, doesn't even matter. Add an X, bring an NXT into the party if you want to. They're not okay. That's mm. the end. And it's not my opinion. It's the opinions of but you are, all these it's fans who are out there. Angry whiny boys on the internet. We are you're an angry whiny boy on the internet, <laughs> what Michael. Are we doing? Exactly. Michael, and you're make, exactly. getting my. I'm God just damn it! You're getting me hot. There are, there are more people that would say WWE is better. You know and what? It's the not. numbers, the data on the internet that I just cited there says you're wrong. I, this is the, really we. How yeah. many people? Whoa, 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 whoa. How yeah. many what? people what? No, has say Will it. Osprey wrestled in front of what? Who? What, this is not the next? discussion. We're not what? discussing houses. We're not discussing the amount of fans. Um, in the, we're talking about the quality of the product in the ring. That's the, what the conversation you want to have. Planet. That's what you want to talk about. You want to talk about what's happening in the ring. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about the number of fans. We're not talking about how big their TV contract is. We're talking about what's happening in the ring. Look at the information. Look at what the fans are saying online on these apps, I'm, on these websites, and tell me I'm wrong. They're not the best in the world. Yeah. Period. What's the percentage of wrestling fans that rate matches on Cage Match? I don't like, know. What's the percentage of ma- the fans that use Grapple? But these that. are the people who are putting their opinions out there. I, it's less than 10%. I will guarantee you. Then that. who cares? Right, roll it back. What small sample size? What, who what cares? Is, what is the sample size? What is, what, what, these are the people who watch. These are the people who care. These are the people who care to watch all down. these matches. Shake and get your the down. Down. Settle, Settle down. down. Settle down. That's a down. very <laughs> skewed sample size is all I'm saying. It's not reliable. Um, any opinions from from the couch before we move on? <laughs> yeah, what about the opinion of the fan who's no longer a fan? Ooh. Look, you know what I do on Monday nights? I don't turn the fucking TV on. You know what I do on Tuesday nights? I don't turn the fucking TV on. You know what I did for the WWE Network? I canceled that shit. You want to know why? Because I can't stand the WWE product, mm-hmm. and I can't stand anything that's going on because nothing's entertaining. Mm-hmm. Everything is promos. And, like, I don't want to sit there for three hours on a Monday night and watch absolutely nothing. I don't want to sit there for two hours on a Monday night or Tuesday and watch nothing. And, like, I love NXT, but guess what? If I want to, I can watch no fucking Hulu. And for, Mm -hmm. what, $6.99 a month? You can get a million fans saying what are the best matches, who are the best workers, this and that. But the real opinion comes from the people who were fans and aren't anymore. Why aren't they fans anymore? That is the opinion that the wrestling business needs to focus on and Mm -hmm. fix. Mm -hmm. Because at one point, we're talking like eight, nine million people. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking two. Two million people does not uh, exceed six million people. And and Ponder kind of goes along with it on the Monday night. Remember the numbers that we had on Monday nights when they were up against each other? Those ratings? You know, the WWE isn't isn't even one of those ratings. It's less than half of the people watching in the late nineties. He said AEW can do good ratings combined. They could do uh, less than Raw did at its peak. You know, if if they go against it and they're they're splitting the audience or adding audience, it could still be less than what Raw did because that's where the wrestling fans are, right? Well, well think of think of this. If Raw has like on average, let's say let's call it an even two million people that tune in every Monday night. Mm-hmm. If you take that pie, mm-hmm. that pie of people, and you're going to put two wrestling shows on at the same time, mm-hmm. you're not drawing two million here, two million there, or one million here, one million there. These two million people is it. That's all you got to draw from in the pie. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's no more, no less. That's, Unless it's, something is drawing back those fans. Right. right. And as a fan who's not a fan anymore... Mm-hmm. I tuned in and I was excited and I was hyped up and I enjoyed watching the AEW Mm pay-per-view. It was something different and I think it was geared more towards the adult fan Mm -hmm. and when they start running on TV, I'm going to watch that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. 
I think we had a good discussion here. I think not too think many feelings. Okay. I think not too many feelings got hurt. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. Let's make sure you nobody's offended. Oh, yes. are you offended? Go, let's let's pass the horn. Every anyone offended? Everybody good here? Good? Mike, how you we doing? Good, we good. We good here? Oh, I'm. I don't give a fuck. I feel great. <laughs> I you, actually you did look, see. Look, we're, we're doing our job, man. man. We're doing That's our job. High five! Our job. <laughs> yeah. This is why go. we're MTO offended. There you go. And it's I'm made too to the person in the chat room. To <laughs> not no fucking idea what MTO. It sounds means. like actually they should be on the couch and you should be talking to them. Did, did Zorg just offer us the hosting position? No, no, no. I meant like no, more, no, no, like host, more we're, therapy We hosted situation. the anniversary show. We're hosting the Wrestling Mayhem show. I, I, we put cones so, and safety so tables. If you, if you thought you'd get on the cover for, for hosting this show, you'd get even less for hosting this show. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. I don't know what Rick pays you, but it's probably less here. Uh, <laughs> Zorg doubled my pay, and I'm still upset about it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> on that the note, double of nothing is nothing. Um, I, I don't even. I, we hell, we ran out of this tonight. Sorry, uh, I, I I finished double or nothing. You did finish double or nothing. Good, I did good. It's okay. Um, I, well, he had reasons. I wasn't able to watch it live because I was away proposing to my girlfriend. Oh, hey, congratulations! Hey. Congratulations! Thank you. Hey, yeah. muzzle talk. Good so, reason. I, I had a good reason. I had you, a good reason. You could say that Mike was too busy going all in. Ah, I see what you did there. Yeah, yeah sex puns that's, all in. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, was but, it just um, was it just the tip I, there, pal? I oh no, no, you got you got to go all in. I do, I do, I do. Then, you, then you go all out. <laughs> then you go all in. What the? All, all right, that's enough. All <laughs> right, and yeah. you go double or nothing. Boom, we're bringing it back. I really hope it's past Junior's uh, bedtime team. I, uh, sorry about that. I, uh, I, <laughs> I I I I only have one major complaint besides um, Dustin. Doing a bad blade job. Jr. needs to not be a commentator. For that mm. Was Jr. high? <laughs> oh, Jr. Jeremy like drunk. what? What Jr. should? What they should do is have Jr. be on for every AEW title match. That whole commentary team was the worst commentary team I've seen in my life. It was god awful. I thought Excalibur was great. In all honesty, like, like it was Excalibur. so bad. It was funny. Mm-hmm. And then I actually started popping for it. Like every time they'd show them on camera and JR is like half baked out of his mind. You got this guy <laughs> in a mask. And I feel like the other guy. Yeah. Might, he got yeah. completely drowned yeah. out. by Well, JR. Excalibur was the only thing that kept that train on the tracks. So, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I, that's why I, I don't want JR there for their weekly show because JR does not know what's going on with anyone that isn't Chris Jericho. Hmm. It's it's true. He was talking about bullshit nonsense when Pentagon is about to break one of the Young Bucks' arms. Mm. Like, that's the signature Pentagon spot. And JR's like, oh, well, the Young Bucks, you know, they, they're, they're born in Saskatoon or whatever the fuck he was talking about. Versus... I'm like, JR, this is a spot you should be paying attention to. Ver- like, I know people don't like someone talking in their ear when they're commentating. Yeah. But you have to get the train on the track somehow. So so versus versus like when he was doing the New Japan, like this is something of course pre taped and he could do notes on and stuff and you know But even then he didn't know the it. people's names. Um he wasn't bad with it. I, 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 was saw, having, I only saw one or two episodes of him doing New Japan. Yeah. He did not know what was yeah, going on. Yeah, the the deal with the whole watching it. Jim Ross, Josh Barnett thing was Becoming extremely diminishing returns. It uh, got whenever they I, were commentating me, that. To was, me, it got happening. better because it was real rough to begin with. Like Josh Barnett seemed really uncomfortable, but, but he at least got better, and I thought carried maybe Jr. a little bit more. So yeah. Um, now Kevin Kelly, two thumbs up. Kevin, like Kelly. Kevin Kelly, he's the man. That's right. So, anyways, hey, want to give a shout out to one of our pizza, uh, one of our pizzas. Yes, one of our pizza people supported Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Uh, our friends right here in uh, Beachview, right up up the street. Four locations in Beachview, Carnegie, PA, East End, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, and again, I know a lot of you guys are not in the area. And uh, I know a couple of you from the West Coast in the chat room even tonight. That's why we are, we are uh, 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 having an unofficial campaign for the slice on broadway expansion uh they've they've grown from one to four locations hell this sticker doesn't even have all four locations that's how that's how how fast they're growing 
They can't even get all the merchandise updated. Uh, but if you have a Broadway in your town, please take a picture of it. Tweet them, TGH underscore Slice on the Twitter, and let them know you would like a Slice on your Broadway. Go check them out, SliceOnBroadway.com. Follow them on social media and thank them for supporting the mayhem show for so long uh we are going to have everybody take a chill break take take a breather take a breather maybe we'll do some yoga some, some DD, ddp yoga brother um empty yoga some empty Ooh, yoga we gotta do that. Oh, oh i like that i smell a franchise <laughs> 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 uh, we do some MT yoga or we'll just play some more Ninja Turtles who knows uh, and we'll be back with the big question and uh, Matt Carlins is going to probably update us on what's going on with New Japan I'll say something he'll say something about New Japan we'll see what happens we'll be right back after this Sidekick Media Services we are your sidekick in business for social media video production and more find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com so we were, we were having this discussion. I realized this should be the show. So we're, we're talking about where everybody's talking about their WrestleMania experience and how Mad Mike will not be deterred by your security force at your WWE event, um, which is a story. You can't I, stop him at the you smoother. Can't, you can't stop him at the smoother. I, I, we, I think the story has been told. I, I think it's a story that definitely you guys that join us here Tuesday have heard a few times. We've been telling that story for 10 yards. Yeah, 10 yards. Um, but... <laughs> Damn it. Um, that was a little too perfect. It's... Anyways, the point is, uh, we started talking about, um, uh, I know, Matt, tell me what you said about WrestleMania uh, in New Orleans again, uh, that statement. I, would, I, I, I loved it. Uh, the only WrestleMania I've ever gone to was the last one in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. I would never want to go to another city for a WrestleMania. Yeah, it was yeah. perfect. And I've been to the one in New York in 29, and uh, obviously Mike goes to the... The, the the ones in he has been to several uh, in New York I, at this I've point. Been to, I've been to three different manias in New York. Mm-hmm. Yes, you're like me. I only go to the Gathering of Jugglers when it's in Ohio. You'll go to every WrestleMania in the New York area. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause, I mean, it helps that it's usually around my birthday. That's my range. That's your range, right? So, mm-hmm. we, we were kind of like p- positioning, like the you know, we talked about the possibility of mania going to the England, right? Mm-hmm. Um and it, I, we, I kind of floated the idea of like, hey, you know what? I think SummerSlam could end up at Heinz Field, you know, pretty easily. The way that they're kind of growing that kind of thing, right? Plus, there's a lot of stuff you can do in Pittsburgh. Yeah, you have the zoo. You know, there's the wrestling history here. Yeah, you know, you could do some stuff with it. With you know, the Bruno, you know, the Bruno Foundation is having a a show, a, a special show next month, um, with NEW, and and I believe the. Uh, the Sam Adonis's group is, is involved in that as well. Um, so, the, so there's a lot of stuff you can tap into here, right? Mm-hmm. If, if you did a wrestling event, you know, there or I mean, I guess you know, Heinz, I, mean, I guess I could do PNC Park even. No, PNC Park. Do, you, uh, you'd have you'd have the base the Pirates playing around that time. So. Yeah, you, know, you, can, you can get them to catch them when they're out of town or something. Yeah, like yeah. Depending on the um, scheduling, it could work out, right? You could use the uh, the Highmark Stadium on the other side of the uh, river, which mm-hmm. is slightly smaller. Well, I don't think you'd do it. Yeah, yeah, I don't think stadium. no. That's a, that's not going to be a. I've never been there. That kind of I don't event. know what kind of. It's not going to work. It, it's the whole point. It'd be great the, for an the whole show. point is to get the skyline of the buildings in the background so you can shoot fireworks off the tops of the buildings. That's right. That can be done. That's right. That's the whole point. The giant ketchup bottle exactly um so so i wanted to position the the other than hey man we really want like uh wrestlemania here in pittsburgh why not right um whether that's real or not uh what other town would you like to see a wrestlemania in at this point it feels like there's like a handful that they just kind of rotate at this point nothing has been a surprise except for tampa this next year SummerSlam is going to Toronto, and is is it the Sky Dome that they're going? No, I believe so. no, no, no. They're doing the arena. In they're doing the arena Toronto for oh, okay, SummerSlam. Yeah, um, um but they they think they're leaning towards. We're seeing it with Royal Rumbles kind of getting bigger, uh, uh, baseball fields and and bigger venues like that, right? With like thirty thousand people. Like, what would you like to see? Yeah, haven't they already booked the uh, the are- the the stadium for next year's Rumble? Like Have they're they? doing Houston. Uh, so. Yes. Is that true? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I believe so. Um, so yeah, Houston or cool. San Antonio, somewhere, somewhere in Texas. It's pretty cool that they're doing like baseball stadiums for the Rumble. Mm-hmm. That's kind of interesting. Seems like the way Alamo Dome a couple of years ago. Which I yeah, don't, yeah, who plays at the Alamo Dome? Like, what is no one plays no at the one Alamo does. Dome? Pro Bowl really? riding. 
<laughs> Monster, <laughs> Monster Jam. Monster Jam. <laughs> that stadium's big, man. The Alamo so Dome. Big. Yeah. I went there before for a uh, bull riding thing. Oh, they, yeah. <laughs> they only used half of it, and it was yeah. huge. Well, it, it blows it's twice my, as big as our still, stadium. It still blows my mind that Mike went to um, Monster Jam at MetLife. Yeah, that does sound oh, crazy. That cool. sounds yeah. crazy. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, and, 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 yeah, and, and Monster Jam is a fucking work. Yeah, it's <laughs> not getting, we got into that. We got into that, I'm too. I'm getting into it again, but Monster Jam is a fucking work. I, I go Monster Jam in Pittsburgh every single February. Oh, it's a blast. Yeah, it's great. It's great. But when the trucks break and they can't replace them, and then instead of getting eight <laughs> trucks, you get seven or six or five, that then you're, then you're running the show with five hey, trucks. It sucks. Listen, they need to have some Cars backup. subject to change, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cars subject to change. Cars subject to change. You guys, did you guys cheer the heels at Monster Jam? Did that happen? Hell yeah. I chair the sexy lady. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb Blood, man. Woo wee. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, Tina wants to see, of course, uh, WrestleMania come back to the Seattle area. Um, so, like, wh- where else would you guys like to see uh, uh, beyond that? Like, um, I like. I've got an idea. Okay. Columbus. Columbus, Ohio. Yes. Okay. Bigger market than Pittsburgh, so more realistic. You okay. put it in the horseshoe. The at Ohio State. Oh. All right. And then you can draw from Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Cleveland, Cincinnati. You get the whole Midwest. Indianapolis, whole Detroit, Midwest. everything. Mm-hmm. You suck it all into Columbus. You know, I, Columbus is actually a really nice city. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to see, and I it drove, drove by it just uh, last month. Um, I would like to see them return to Ford Field. Mm-hmm. Because uh, Detroit, since the last time they they've been there, has been through kind of a downtown renaissance, right? Um, I'm sure dealing with some issues that we are in Pittsburgh, gentrification wise, but um, but still, like <laughs> no, politics. It, it, yeah, no politics, no politics, <laughs> no no politics, Dan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you, sorry, that was a visual cue for your podcasters. Um, anyways. <laughs> You know, but but yeah, it seems like a town that that needs to be like, oh hey, I want to go to Detroit, <laughs> you know, a little bit. But I don't right. really so, want to go. To but I don't really want to go to Detroit. But for us, like that's not that's not a far jaunt for us to. I mean, uh, on a self. Yeah, that's the kind of place where yeah we would like people yeah. from Pittsburgh would be hey, like, I'll t- drive there. Let's take yeah. a weekend, you know, yeah. and, and and do that. I mean, I mean, how many times have you know uh, we've driven across an Ohio four hours for a wrestling show, right? So. Um, are you leaning into my shot? Back? No, I'm Is just that... kind of stretching. I'm... <laughs> You're just like that's why it's on Broadway. I'm just working it out. Right oh now. yeah, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, but no, I, th- I think that's a good idea. So yeah, I, I keep forgetting about the um, college spots yeah for the state. it's not like a cotton bowl or something right? well i mean Orange if you're trying to think of like you know yeah. giant stadiums around here that you could do mm-hmm. um in large markets i mean that's pretty columbus is about as good as you can do right now so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in this hey, part of the country probably a little even a little better uh, uh weather wise than new york new jersey you know a little bit <laughs> so i mean that was pretty freaking freezing at 29 uh myself so but uh, uh yeah this this year wasn't that bad yeah wasn't that bad Good, good. Yeah, it was, it was pretty decent. Anything else? Any other ideas? Um, I, I'd like to see something at Wrigley Field. Wrigley? Yeah. Because they used to have, like, old Shea Stadium shows and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, I like the atmosphere of, like, an old school baseball park. Like, I don't know what you can do. Maybe a Survivor Series or something like that. Mm-hmm. So it's because, I mean, you know, the Cubs won't be playing in November. Right. Well, <laughs> well it's go. late November. Anyway, That's true. So. That's true. They yeah. don't usually play that late. So. Well, yeah. and and I think I think like all those like the the northern things, other than baseball in general, like you know, we did get Wembley for SummerSlam, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I and loved, Wembley was an amazing visual. It was a. It was and I. I don't have they done a big venue like that for SummerSlam otherwise? Not on really. that scale. I don't um, think they've ever done one that big. No, not, not that big. No. But I mean that was a big special occasion. You had a hometown guy. You had you know it was the international, like the first major international, and it didn't event. have to be live, right, 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 right. Because because this... a lot of people don't know that one was taped. Yeah, it was like live to tape when it aired in the states. But you wouldn't have gotten word otherwise. Uh, the, yep. those days. So, uh, does anybody know the attendance record from this pay per view that just happened? I seen pictures of it online and. <laughs> Half the place was blocked off. Yeah, uh, the word. I, is, I'm 
I blame the Pacific Northwest for that. Oh. Oh. What, what would you, what would you estimate Bear that was God, the... Yeah, Tina Keys is coming in right now. There you go. Here we go. Here we go. One. I'm waiting for that comment. <laughs> um, no, the, the word is uh, maybe 6,000. 6,000. 6, so if you're only selling 6,000 tickets, why don't they do some off-the-wall kind of stuff like Hog Wild or Bash at the Beach <laughs> where it was like an outside <laughs> event? Yeah. It wasn't actually a stadium per so, se, but so, I mean, if you sell 6,000 tickets at Sturgis, then... Do you That's know the, pretty cool. Do you know the background? No, but Sturgis, they didn't sell tickets. I, I was going to say, do you know the background on those events? Eh, like here the, and there. Uh, yeah, no, so those, those were They didn't sell shows. tickets. They lost money on those. So there, there was no gate. Uh, there was no gate at all. Like Sturgis was you know, wide open. They, they rolled up in their motorcycles, which is cool. Yeah. But it's more of, it was, I mean, these were kind of more vanity projects, right? You, yeah. Now, you know what I'd like to see? Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. It's sorry. okay. Go ahead. Um, Let's run an NXT TakeOver during Comic-Con. Ooh, there is why the, so there why is the fuck not like um, that'd be real cool there is a thing um over here mike i don't know if you've seen this with some of our friends of the show uh but but a few of the guys we know go to colossal con i think in ohio um like i believe lee does uh christian noir like like uh i think Ray Lee might have been a part of it or maybe a different one but they go and they do wrestling shows in cosplay oh so see there we know. go I don't that's, know that's what we're talking about. I don't know if you've seen pictures of Ray Lynn as Harley Quinn, but that was her wrestling outfit. I have not, but so, that is something I may Google. Somebody after the was, show. somebody might be checking in Instagram. Now. Is that when Beastman dressed up as the uh, Tooth Fairy? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like they do something. Um, like NXT does a yearly Halloween battle royal. Oh yeah, like their house shows or something, right? Yeah, at one of their house shows. But like, bring it to like. C2E2. Like, whatever weekend C2E2 is, run NXT TakeOver there. You want um, to talk about bringing new fans to it? That's how you do it. So, uh, Tina has chimed in, by the way. Not, not how you think, though. Uh, she's got a few notes, because she's always she's always in the group letting us know when shows are on vet ticks, where she give free tickets to uh, veterans. Um, uh, it says about 200 tickets were given away to vets that she's aware of. Um and they were saying about six thousand, uh, six to ten thousand. Um, and there were stories about the, you know there was a lot of giveaways and two for one deals and stuff there, which is weird for a pay per view versus like a Monday Night Raw where we want to feel it for television, right? Where was this at? This was in um Tacoma, Washington. Tacoma, Washington, which is Seattle area. Am I if I'm not mistaken? I, I don't think. Wait, so. I think that ha- I think it's on the other end of the state. I think that. Yeah, that, I think I think it's like when people think, say that Philadelphia is near Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it's I think That's it's more toward, <laughs> more toward Idaho. Let's, yeah, let's put it this way: Detroit is two hours shorter away than Philadelphia for us. Yeah. So. Hell, even like Albany is two hours from New York City. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. you know. So so, anyways, uh, also other comments that kind of go with what we're saying. WWE has contracts. She says with Ace Comic Con. I don't know which Comic Cons those are. Um, I think that's C2E2. That's C2E2, so there you go. Yeah. Well, they're, they're doing a lot of it, and even they go to WizardCon and everything, too. So there is a relationship there. Um, it says that's where Bailey, Charlotte, and Lillian Garcia are, are appearing this weekend, apparently. Um, <laughs> and, and Tacoma is an hour south of Seattle. So we're getting all the updates. That's good. Straight from the Northwest. Straight from our informant in the Northwest. By the way, if you've never been to the Northwest, go. It's pretty amazing up there. Someday. So I uh, if Portland, Southern Washington area was amazing last year. Um, I should shout out our friends on uh, some other friends on the West Coast. Our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling. <laughs> Pro Wrestling is a wild and crazy art form, and Occupy Pro Wrestling is here to make to look at what makes it fun. Uh, featuring articles, blogs, and a podcast that brings you interviews with fellow fans. Occupy Pro Wrestling is, bring, is putting the smart back in smart mark. Some great merchandise over there. Um, oh, I just realized uh, C-3PO is not wearing the smart hat. I need to break that out again. Uh, check it out at OccupyProWrestling.com. Our good friend out there, Alex, it was good hanging out with him. We watched a lot of wrestling <laughs> when uh, uh, over the last couple months out there in L.A., uh, an Oki Dojo, and uh, we went to a uh, Rise with an I, I pay per view. That was a lot of fun out there. So, um, good, uh, go check their stuff out. So, Matt, yes, you watch, you watch wrestling from uh, from across the Pacific. I understand. It's been known to happen. I know it's coming this way, Super J Cup and everything in the, in the Northwest. I know Tina's very excited about that. True story. Uh-huh. So, so uh, you know, I, I want to make sure we're not leaving it out of the loop. Not all of us are aware of what's happening in New Japan uh, internationally here. 
Uh, but you are. This is what you wake up in the morning and find out what show they I had do. last night. Because I come, because I come home from my overnight shift and I'm like, does New Japan have a show? Is there a show? Are they running some Kazuna Roadhouse show? Is it on there? No, it's not there. <laughs> but there was one this morning. There actually. was one this morning. Yeah, it was, it was the last something. night of the tour. Well, you go through your night. You found out about all the ha- house fires and alligators found in Pittsburgh overnight. Yes. <laughs> and then you find out what... By the way, like three blocks from here. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> it gets weird. Chomp. It's Ch- Chomp. Does he have a name? Yeah. Yeah, his oh, name no. was Chomp. Or did they give it back to that guy? Nope. He wanted it back. Nope. 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 They took all of his animals. <laughs> took all of his animals? Yep. They took them all. You know, he walked like up here, up the street with the alligator one time when it was much smaller, by the way. Yeah. I think it was a big alligator. It was a pretty big alligator by the time they, the, the police found him. Anyways, when we're not thinking about alligators in Pittsburgh, what's happening in Japan? Well, they wrapped up their Kazuna Road tour. This is kind of like the prelude to the G1 with uh, the final night of the tour. All right, all right. Is, um, uh, is, uh, it was okay. It was. Um, is Mo- I, I, Moxley still dragging his young boy around? Not, well, Moxley wasn't on this tour. Okay. Uh, Moxley will uh, will rejoin the tour um, when they get back to Japan okay. for the uh, second night of the G1. Okay. He will not be with them in Dallas uh, coming up on uh, July. What are we talking about? It might be big. Well, he's in a different block. Right, he's in a different block. So yeah, he's not. They're doing yeah, A block he, matches in Dallas. Then when the B block starts, Mox will be there. He's not allowed to wrestle for New Japan in the states. It's part of his AEW contract. So yeah, whatever. Makes sense. Um, the um, all right. So because I, I just want to get through this thing with the Kazuna Road thing. It's it's this it's like rinky dink tour. You know, it's like um, watching SmackDown. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this so, is the SmackDown of New Japan. It's the wrestling. SmackDown of New Japan. Um, this morning, um, they did have a couple title matches. They had, uh, El Phantasmo, Vancouver's gift to pro wrestling, the worst human being on the planet. And, uh, he, um, defended his, um, British cruiserweight championship against, uh, Rusuke, uh, Taguchi, the funky weapon who I enjoy very much. And then, uh, in the main event, um, that, uh, skinny guy, uh, Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, beat Yoshihashi. Uh, and de- uh, Zach defended his um, Rev Pro British Heavyweight Championship. Mm. And the catch was that Zach is in the G1, mm-hmm. but if he had lost, not only would he have lost his title, Yoshi Goddamn Hashi would have taken his spot in the G1. No. So it was all on the line. But don't worry, Zach twisted him in nuts for a good 30 minutes. Okay. And it was, um, it was uh, Zach twisting him in nuts for 30 minutes. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not a Zack Sabre Jr. guy, but this was not doing it for me. You don't like so, twisting I, it not Zack Sabre Jr.? Or I mean, are you like, just beyond I, it? I, I was watching it, and I was thinking, like, you know what? Zack is twisting this guy in nuts, and it's just not doing it for me. And I was thinking, like, is it is this a style thing for me? But then I was thinking back to... Is it the fact that it's uh, it's uh, uh, 9 in the morning, and you're watching pro wrestling from Japan? definitely is always a factor. Okay. And I'm like, am I tired? Um, are you sure it just wasn't Yoshihashi? No, what? Hey, like, I, I, did you ever believe? Don't you dare blame Joe Yoshihashi. Oh, that was not saying, Yoshihashi's ever, fault. Maybe he just did didn't you make ever you think believe there was it. any other outcome than Zach Yoshihashi looked, getting twisted and not. Zach looked bored. Anyway, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but I, I want to do it. The point I was going to make is that um, I was thinking back to when uh, Jonathan Gresham was working over there during the Best of the Super Juniors, and he works kind of a similar style. The Zach likes to twist people in knots. It's never boring with Gresham. For me, at least, I find him That's endlessly true. entertaining. Yes. So, but Zach, for some reason, at times doesn't do it for me. So, anyway, it happened. What about Zach versus Whatever Gresham? Happened. Would you would you buy a Zach versus Gresham? I'm sure it's happened. I look forward to checking it out. Mm-hmm. I should try to seek that out. There you go. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else that happened. Nothing else happened. On Nothing this. else happened. It was for good. The New Japan SmackDown. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's okay. I mean, I, a- I, there's a certain charm to these. Like they do these like. 10 man tags and mm-hmm. eight man tags mm-hmm. all the time mm-hmm. and it's just kind of like everyone's gonna get their stuff in and that's and, a, i mean that's... these guys will have a one-on-one later but not tonight not too much and you get like 30 seconds of abushi and naito and then they kind of scatter off and then whatever it seems to be the mexico style too because I, yeah. you know i've seen this you know with you know prince sam adonis with the wrestle rex is obviously right you know, everybody comes in. Oh, well, look at these guys, and they're having a tag match. So, like, the bigger right. names, right? And if you tune in, like, CM, you, I think both AAA and CMLL, you can watch. Like, we can all watch. Yeah. Like, between Twitch and, and Facebook Lives and stuff, like, they're just putting it out there. But again, it's just like, this is going to be an eight man match. You know, this yeah. is, you, you know, that's, that's a multitude of what you're seeing. 
um, out there. So I, I, it's it's interesting how similar they, they they come across. I mean, they do a crossover show. I mean, I'll, I'll yeah, I'll do the um. They mm. put some CMLL on the uh, on the New Japan World. Oh, now, really? I'll check it out every once in a while. They, they put like to, an hour of stuff on it with get, Japanese commentary, yeah, so it makes yeah. so not only you get you getting getting you know you want to talk about me, ignorant American wrestling fan, yours truly. You're getting the Japanese commentary on top of the uh, you know Spanish language, you know natural sounds on the, on the broadcast. Oh, I have no clue what's happening. I don't know what's happening. Mm-hmm. Here comes masked wrestlers. No, you know, graphics to say this is so and so. No, they just like masked wrestlers enter. You know, dancing girls. You know, do you have the dancing girls for the entrances at Sam Mello? Have you ever witnessed I, this? I have not witnessed that. I'm no. going to show you this after the show. You'll oh, crack. okay. You'll laugh your ass off. Um, is it like early days of TNA? It's something like they just they, they dance endlessly during these entrances. Okay, but they have a different dance for every entrance. Okay, but it's just something slightly different, you know. Are you, judge, are, you judging, guys that, are you just judging the dancing I'm girls just at this? Watching point? it because it's the only thing that like crosses you know language barriers for me. I'm just uh-huh. like, okay, they change their dance. This is somebody different. <laughs> this looks like a heelish dance. You know, it's <laughs> stupid shit like that. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, yeah, sometimes you'll check that out. But yeah, CML with Japanese commentary. Good times. <laughs> That's the moral of the you, story. You here. want something Jeez. to fall asleep to at nine in the morning? <laughs> After you've done the all the sweet which sounds is, of Japanese is, commentary and just like rah, 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 in the background, you know, because uh, spe- you'll you get the horns there? in the background. Oh, yeah, every once in a while you get the horns in the background. Oh, uh, yeah, we know. Oh, oh, CML. Oh, listen, have you listened, have you listen, listened to Spanish language radio? Like, it just happens. Like,. <laughs> I, because they were, they were playing, like, listen, I, ha- listen, I had to sit at a booth at Cinco de Mayo across the street, and <laughs> this is just, like, you hear about, like, two minutes of song, like, yeah, okay, I get this, I don't know what they're saying, but I like the beat, right, and then I was here, ba 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 I'm sorry, language, yeah, but it's, air horns, yelling about something, new song plays, I'm sure this is what our radio sounds like to other other uh, countries too, um, but uh, it's it's like like Hot 101 or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> like in Espanol. Um, but it, it was fascinating. Caliente, uh, Cali- Caliente. Um, hey, DJ Z <laughs> was really big down there in uh, in Mexico City. So I don't know who that is anymore. I, I don't know. Uh, I, 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 we, we, let's talk about that identity crisis in a moment. But in the meantime, I do have um, uh, our West Coasters are talking about um, their new Japan that's coming to their hometowns here. Um, apparently that uh, Super J Cup uh, sold out um, in Tacoma. Awesome. Obviously a much smaller oh. venue than WWE was at. But uh, apparently they, they have not sold out at Long Beach. But this is also like the third year that they've been running there. So... Um, that's a good sign. But also, it sounds like uh, like wrestling is really kind of spinning up up there in the Northwest too, between uh, what did you say, Defy and uh, yeah. three, two, three two one battle. Um, so which I believe our friend uh, uh Max wrestling with side titles we talked to a long time ago is involved in. So uh, like I, I was watching, I'm just like I know that guy. We talked with that guy, <laughs> and and he was uh, introducing like Sean Phoenix when he came back after the injury. So, um, anyways, a lot of happening there. <laughs> You guys in the chat room, you guys okay over there? You don't watch. I know you guys don't watch New Japan, do you? I like New Japan. Yeah. I honestly just zoned out most of the conversation that was happening. <laughs> we wore them out in the. First I, I didn't mean to make it go on for too long for you guys. So no, you're fine. You guys go. No I there was not much to talk about this week, so just let's uh, get on with it. Shout out! Shout out! Uh, Walking Phoenix. No, Walking Wild. Walking Walkin Wild. Wild. Walking Phoenix. That's what I'm gonna do now. I'm so sorry. Walking um, wild, yes. Get crazy, get wild. He will be debuting on NXT this week as part of the tomorrow tournament. night. Tomorrow night. I mean, he, he mostly has the same look. I believe he's coming. Walking out. wild versus uh, Garza Junior. Garza Junior. Yeah. I want to know what made him go with Joaquin Wild. Uh, I, I heard that Joaquin, Joaquin is a family name, like a grandfather or something like that. that. Could be. That's why he took it. That makes sense. Which is pretty. Cool. And he's also a big Taylor Wild fan from TNA. There you go. I oh I'm, my goodness, I'm are they related kidding. in canon? That's what they asking. are now. That's, they are. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm gonna completely message them. I didn't know you were related to Taylor Wilde. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I still I hope his first shirt 
says get crazy, get wild on it. Because every time he's been tweeting, mm -hmm. that's what I've responded. So I, you know, <laughs> get crazy, get because that's the opening of the Jersey Shore theme song where they blow air horns all the time. Last time he was on here in in, in March, we were talking about the maintenance of his out his his light up outfit, his light up outfits. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, okay, and, and it, it looks like he came out that first match. We saw a little bit of footage of like his first NXT like house show match, and I was like, okay, cool. Is WWE footing the bill for that now? <laughs> you know? like, so he can like. Are they at least giving him a safe place to store it so he doesn't have to transport? Yeah, exactly. It I mean, it, it, at least because damn it, that has been that stuff is so cool. A bitch on an airplane, right? I know. So and then remember, he was he was traveling international with it. Mm -hmm. I know. Having to explain you, that thing. How do you? That's serve that? check your X-ray machine. Found a, bag. found a bag full of bulbs and wires. Can you explain <laughs> that? Like I had trouble like explaining my camera to the Chinese, you know that was scary, and I was also if it left my sight, I just was going to leave it. Um, but uh, <laughs> yes, I recommend it. Um, but it'll be interesting to see him again uh, NXT this week. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. There's something funny just happened outside. Outside? Are we? Are we getting some some really skinny like anorexic looking dude mm -hmm. put his hand out to this really big fat girl and she just like blew him off and walked away mm. i was laughing there's a lot that. of hearts being broken out look, there look at you commenting on people's weights now huh i'm allowed though you're you're yeah. you're uh i'm, I'm gonna be you're a cocky son of a bitch i am i am six pounds away from being a cruise weight i can do it yeah can't wait for that <laughs> go and start doing the flippy stuff <laughs> the flippy be awesome. yeah. <laughs> All right. i can't wait for the ronnie starks moonsault uh, just, just wait till Ron i get some salt the Ron Salt. Just wait Ronnie Camrana. The <laughs> Shooting Stark Press. The Shooting Stark Press. <laughs> oh my gosh, so many good moves coming just, your way. Just wait till the uh, 205 Starks t-shirts come 205 out. 205 Starks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now we gotta talk fight. Fight Society will have a cruiserweight battle. It'll just be you and Zeke fighting all the time. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, hey, it's that time again? of the Again? Yeah, again, right? <laughs> hey, Hey, Bronco. You Bronco. gotta build up the suspense for it, too. We're gonna reveal your challenger. The number one contender is gonna be revealed tonight. I can't wait. Who's it gonna be? <laughs> Come, same guy. Oh, <laughs> no! Again! Just lots of chops. <laughs> lots of chops. By my own lots of chops and teasing moonsaults. Yeah, <laughs> so good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> I just like flips are a violation. Just I can't keep, do that shit. Just keep climbing to the top rope and being like, oh, oh, oh no, he stopped him this Today's time. The oh, day. So Today's close. the day. Today's the day. He's going on up the top. Ground. This is it. <laughs> oh man, the empty OSHA safety violation on cruiserweight moves. That'd be like a good spin on the Drew Gulak thing that he was doing for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have fun with that. I I'm sorry, I I'm still on that. probation. I cannot do this shooting Stark press tonight. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry to all my fans here in deepest darkest West Virginia. I cannot do the shooting Stark press. <laughs> You should like tape the violations to the top rope so you can't even go near it. Yes. Banned in two states, West Virginia and Pennsylvania. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did put caution tape put caution tape around the ring post so you can't even climb. I did I know we talked about Virgil earlier, but I did like the the, the couple of months where you were knocking people out and, and shoving violations in their mouth like the dollar bills. Like that they appreciated that one. So um well anyways, guys, it's time to find out what did you learn from pro wrestling this week? Anybody? Anybody want to go for it? I just learned that Ronnie Stark's going to be a cruiserweight in six pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> yes. Uh, follow, I think follow his, his journey on Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I learned that the uh, Firefly Funhouse still haunts my child's dreams. Mm -hmm. So uh, a little concerned about that. Yeah. yeah. Very, a, little, a little worried. But What, uh, we'll what happens when he starts showing up? Just... I, pay -per -view. I, I mean, all I can really Let's hope for is in. that once he's once he makes once Bray makes his like in ring debut, mm -hmm. like all the bells and whistles around him will just wither away to nothing, and he will just be another wrestler, and then we can all move on. <laughs> At least you and your child can. At least my child can move on. Yeah. So we'll see. Hopefully, it. it I mean, we gotta find out. This the whole thing's gonna work, I, right? I really, I really hope Alistair turns around. And he opens the door, and it's the fun house. I, I love that idea. Mm -hmm. That Alistair has secretly, secretly been living behind the door in the back of the Firefly Fun House mm -hmm. this whole time. Mm -hmm. Like, if they do another episode this week, and the door opens, and Alistair Black walks out. That was this. <laughs> you have tattoos. Spin. You're a creepy guy. And of then, course you're with and this And then guy. there's the, you know, like, black mask to the Abby the Witch. 
gone. <laughs> <laughs> or that, or the, or the Vince Devil. Oh yeah, yeah, even better. Puppet. Yeah, that's what they should oh, do. Oh, so creepy. Do that. So creepy. Can we bring the Muppets back as a Raw host to meet Devil Vince? Unbelievable. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Seamus, Seamus is in canon cousins of with uh, Beaker. That is true. That is true. Hey, can your cousin come back? We got a bit for you. Oh, power couple. Seth and Becky versus Kermit and Piggy. Yeah. That'll put the asses in the seats. Mm-hmm. Ronnie Stark, what did you learn from? The Muppets have no asses. <laughs> 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 That's a man's up the mess. Damn it. Ronnie oh, Stark, what did you learn from pro wrestling or Muppets this week? I learned that uh, Drake Maverick didn't consummate the marriage or constipate the marriage. What? <laughs> he didn't do either of those. Did you did you even see that thing? I watched it on YouTube uh, uh, this morning. Which part of it? Uh, oh, nice talk. The whole thing about when he came out and he said our truth. He's like, "You ruined my wedding. It's all your fault. My wife won't even talk to me. She won't look at me. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't even consummate the marriage." But he like he w- he wanted to say something else, but he kept like stalling. And he's like, "Just say it." He's like, "Consummate the marriage," and our truth is like uh, a little fiber can help with that. <laughs> and the Miz is like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah, he's like, "Was like, what are you talking about?" He's like, "His marriage is constipated." And then like they all start laughing. He's like, <laughs> "Constipated, you idiots!" Well, was, it was probably the funniest part. I of missed the like night. all the promos last night. It was funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, "Oh, I really need to take time to watch this one." Um, awesome. Drake Maverick is awesome. Yeah, I, it's. I, I'm just glad he's on this platform and just going at it. Mm-hmm. So. Um, Dan Sandwich. Uh, I learned that the hottest thing in the ring is not wrestling; it's Tyson Fury. No boxing. The fans. boxing guy. Bo- boxing fans. I know who he uh, is. No. Yeah. Uh, he's 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 man bod man, right? Yeah. Uh, the yeah, dude's like six foot nine, and he's more entertaining than anything WWE's got. Uh, after he wins his match, which, by the way, only went one and a half rounds, and in the second round he switched up to uh, fight Southpaw, which was like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, then afterwards he gets on the mic. Dude, uh, the announcer guy comes up to him. He goes, so you're uh, you're entertaining, right? Why don't you give us something, some entertainment? Grabs the mic and he goes, okay. Water. Get some water. Grabs the mic, starts singing Aerosmith. The fucking place goes nuts. Everybody <laughs> in the building is wait, wait, singing wait, wait. Aerosmith. What song? Wait, what song? What's, yeah, what song? Don't want to close my eyes. <laughs> no. I mean, what no. other Aerosmith song would you do? Oh, Walk no. this way. Well, I mean, what if you're in an arena setting and you're trying to get everybody going? It's it's great an right elevator. Choice. As soon as Dan told me about it, I, I YouTube it. That video is money. Do yourself yeah. a favor. Yeah. Type in Tyson Fury Aerosmith on, mm-hmm. on YouTube. Jeez. You will not regret it. It's that guy great. is oh, money. I am not a boxing fan. I like I like watching them. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna go out of my way. If it's mm-hmm. on, I'll watch it. If not, whatever. But I am looking forward to this guy's next fight. This guy sells tickets. It's an important reminder that just because you're a boxer or an MMA fighter or something like that does not mean you have to be boring. You could still be like entertaining and cut promos and all that stuff. I was Hell just yeah. trying to think about who's the guy, that, the MMA fighter who just retired? Conor McGregor? No, 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 no. Oh, he's um, back though. Shh, God damn it. He was doing studio stuff mostly. I think he was in Bellator now, but he was like, great promo. You know, didn't win all his fights, but like just awesome, entertaining, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Larger than life, you know. Need well, more of that. Look at look at what Matt Light did with the shenanigans around that that comedy boxing fight that he got into, which he just got knocked out. But everybody's talking about him, right? Right. Like he turned it into Attitude Era DX. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was doing DX chops, but uh, you know. Um, but uh, you know, I mean, and he turned he turned the crowd. He was the troll. He was the one everybody wanted to see knock out. That he wanted to see him fight again. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 it is the theatrics and the personality that's going to sell any of these things. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's why it was so big when Brock came in. Yeah, because right? it was like, oh shit, he's gonna like Brock was cutting promos. He's yeah, he's not a he's not an amazing promo, but he's a great MMA promo compared to everybody else. He there knows mm-hmm. how to yeah yeah. Yeah, he knows how to get people going. He, he's right. from. And it's about more than just you know the pro. I mean, more than just w- the words coming out of your mouth. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, presence and charisma. And yeah. Brock understands yeah. all that stuff. Oh so. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, Mad Mike, what'd you learn? I, I learned 
that love is a battlefield and so is a wrestling wedding. Mm. 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 I, I mm. went deep. Mm. I went deep. Yeah, you did. Good. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Hopefully not your mm-hmm. wedding. We'll see. <laughs> see where that goes. Try to get a title yeah. change. Tina Keys uh, <laughs> learned that... Uh, after watching uh, Braun, EC3, and Mojo running around at Pike Place Market on Instagram, uh, that's a sitcom waiting to happen. <laughs> mm-hmm. There you go. Um, yeah, there's, there's some fun stuff happening um, over there between the weddings and everything. Um, Alex learned that a couple guys can only be, quote, brothers as long as they're in the same company. I think we're talking about uh, Seth and uh, Moxley there. Mm. I'm getting used to calling him Moxley. By Ugly way. divorce. Oh, he- he did change his last name, so he, did change. he didn't get the name in the divorce, did he? Nope. <laughs> so, um, Renee Moxley. What was it, Renee Moxley? I learned that the best thing is, um, um, not Renee. We were talking about this last night, Mike. Oh, uh, uh, Kevin Owens not knowing who Sarah Schreiber yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was one of my favorite things. Did, that- did you watch that promo? Uh, no, I didn't get a chance. I did not go back and Sword? watch those yet. Um, Sword, you still need to watch. I it's, do. It's three minutes. There, there's so between uh, Owens and Sam, and Sammy just doing whatever backstage. Um, the Iconics and the the super mix of the Iconics that came out Monday that ended up on our group. Um, you got to be joking. Oh, 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 yeah, oh yeah. I I learned I learned one more thing. Hmm. Dana Brooke is a fucking gamer. Oh yeah. On main event this week, she beat Sarah Logan with a swanton. Really? It's true. I saw the video. Yeah. After getting it busted good open last week. After getting busted open last week, like on main event. Are you guys following? Dana Brooke, Dana Brooke is a fucking gamer. Are you guys following the hottest feud on WWE's main event in the last two weeks of Dana Brooke and Sarah Logan? No. Uh, apparently, <laughs> Dana got busted open or face. She got clanged off a post, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got... It, 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 it sounded terrible. Yeah, it. Looked... It sounded as bad as Dustin Rhodes looked at. Uh, <laughs> at Double or nothing. It looked pretty bad, and they, they, they followed it up on social media, and I guess yeah, yeah they had a rematch this week, right? Mm-hmm. So and, da- and Dana won with a picture perfect looking Swanton. Wow. I wish someone would keep track of how often these women hurt each other. It's, it does seem. It seems like. Um, she, actually, if you watch the Alexa Bliss 365, you'll see Ronda Rousey's hurt a lot of people. <laughs> I bet. It was a good 365, by the way. Um. Uh. Yeah. It, well, yeah. It seems like Charlotte's like bleeding from somewhere, like every major match she's in, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's it's it, um, it's interesting. Um, well, there's always like once in a while there's that WWE pay per view where it seems like like every other match has somebody getting busted open, like you know catching the nose, catching the lip or something, right? And it just seems like uh, you know maybe everybody got hyped up and they're trying too hard tonight, right? Or something like it, that's the vibe that comes off. So yeah. that's interesting, guys. Mt Osha, Mt Offended. Thank you for joining us once again. You, thanks, thanks you're, you're just you're just living on that couch now. You oh, I love this couch. Embedded, I think I fell asleep. Embedded in the couch. Yeah, yeah he's so relaxed over there. It's so great. Uh, it. Where can people uh, follow what's going on with you guys online, and where are you going to be in the next monthish? Go, Dan. You can start. Uh, I'll be at the altar in July. Okay. So I will. Okay. Uh, maybe a black diamond show. Okay. Maybe. Hard maybe. Uh, I will also be at the altar. <laughs> <laughs> in front and center. <laughs> in front and center, because I'm, I'm marrying him and. Uh, Carrie. There you go. And then I will also be at uh, Black Diamond. And then there is... Uh, I don't know if I can talk about that yet. Uh-oh. Oh, I mean, just because we're not going to be there doesn't mean that the fans can't go, but Fight Society's moving to Friday Fridays, nights. yes, there's that. Friday Night Fight Society. And Check out fr- 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 blah, 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 blah. Friday Night Fights. <laughs> there's, Friday a, night. There, there's also a, uh, a benefit show that's going to be happening here pretty soon. Run by uh, Beastman, and I'm, I'm helping. Nice. So, yeah. Am I booked? Yes, you're booked. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> there you go. Maybe you can book uh, Mad Mike versus uh, Mainstream Matt, too, uh, yeah. <laughs> for tonight. <laughs> yeah, I'll book it. This literally happens like once a month now. It's just like it's 
Get a little out of here. It's part of the show. Thank you so much, yeah. Mainstream Mad on the Twitter one T. That's right. Mad Mike for a day three. Also, YouTube.com slash poppy. There you go. At Sorgosh on the Twitter. Uh, if you have not checked it out, the, the live feed that we did last week, but uh, if you're following on the podcast, uh, we will be releasing our interview with one Paul Atlas of Fight Society PWX fame. We talked a lot about Pittsburgh wrestling in the 90s wrestling and some interesting uh, uh, interesting things around WWF at the time uh, that he was involved in. Uh, a lot of fun uh, catching up with him and learning about his history and our Pittsburgh legend in the area. And uh, he'll be commentating on, uh, I believe he'll be on Uprise uh, this Friday. He just did Angel Gate this past week, and that'll be up soon on all VOD outlets. And and he also is very involved with Fight Society as well. Um, and uh, we have a few more interviews lined up, uh, so we're going to keep that ball rolling. And, uh, of course, join us. I don't mention this enough on here, but join us on the Monday nights for the Monday Mayhem wrap-ups where uh, Mike and I just, you know, contemplate life choices of watching wrestling on Monday. And I usually <laughs> give Sorg a Lego update. Yeah, we. oh, that's that's where you get Mike's Lego updates. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So a lot of Harry Potter going on right now. So uh, Yeah. What are you building Hogwarts, Hogwarts right now? Um, we're, uh, right now, I'm currently working on the Hogwarts yeah, Express. Yeah. Oh, nice. Thank you. There's a little preview. Give the rest for Monday, Mike. You got you to gotta give a I, reason to tune in. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Trust really me. I still, have, I still have four bags. <laughs> I have four bags. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you next time. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.